Welcome to a Digital Media Academy how-to, an introduction to Ableton Live 9. My name is Tyler Winnick, and I'm the lead instructor for digital audio and music courses here at Digital Media Academy. In this how-to, we're going to cover the interface of Ableton Live, how to work with audio and MIDI in Ableton, and also how to record a basic performance from what you've created. Here are the basic system requirements needed to run Ableton Live 9. Let's get started. Ableton Live is a DAW, or Digital Audio Workstation, that is extremely powerful, versatile, and fun. It can be used to record and manipulate audio, program and create using instruments, and even perform during live shows. Today's best DJs and performers use Ableton to create and perform their tracks. Here I have a basic track loaded up that I've created for the purpose of this demo. It contains some basic audio and MIDI tracks and some basic audio and MIDI clips. Here we have three audio tracks with audio clips on them. And then we also have an, a MIDI track with MIDI clips on them. Now the difference is audio clips are showing waveforms here, which is physical audio recorded. And MIDI tracks have software instruments loaded onto them that are triggered with MIDI notes. For example, I have a grand piano loaded here and I can click on the notes to trigger the sound. Now I'm in detail view down here, and I can also click to see my instrument at the bottom right hand corner. So here I have a grand piano loaded. Now if I want to play clips, I can click the play button to play them individually, or click the scene button to play the entire row. Right now I'm going to click and play this drum sample so you can hear it. Now you can play it with that button, or you can stop it with this button. Okay. Now if I want to add another loop to it, I can click the play button and it will start on the next bar. This is really cool for performing live. Back to the drums and then stop. Now, spacebar on the keyboard stops and plays the global track and I can also hit stop here and go back to the beginning. So if you wanted to trigger loops faster than one bar at a time you can change this so for example if I change this to uh, eighth note here and play this drums again I can then trigger this bass line every eighth note to change so for example I can be like so if you want to play an entire scene, you could click the track under the master here. You can click the scene button here and play the entire row. Hit the space bar. So that's pretty much how the session view works. You have audio and MIDI tracks, audio and MIDI clips, and you're able to play them in ways that you want and perform live using these tools. Ableton's amazing for that. Now, if you want to add new loops or new tracks or instruments, you can do so by going into the browser. Here, I already have my desktop folder loaded, but if I wanted to add another folder for my hard drive, I could you know, click this button here. But on my desktop, I have this samples folder, and in there, I have these three samples loaded. I have a different drum loop, I have a muted guitar, and a vocal loop. So I want to add this muted guitar. Sounds pretty cool. I clicked on it and it played it. Now, if I want to use it, I just drag it and drop it here, and it will create a new track. Boom. So now if I play it, it sounds pretty cool. It's a little loud, though, so I want to turn the volume down using the volume fader here. So maybe I want to play it in the right speaker. I can pan it with this knob. So now it's only playing in the right speaker or in the left speaker like this. I can also turn the track on and off with this button so it's no longer enabled. Now it's back. I can solo it and play it by itself here. And then you also have a record button here where you can record audio. 
So now that I have that muted guitar sample in there and my volume's adjusted properly, I'm gonna wanna name the track. Right now it's named Audio, notice that. So I can click on the track header, I can right click and choose Rename or use Command R. Command R is a keyboard shortcut, notice there's keyboard shortcut icons for a bunch of different things there. Insert audio track, insert MIDI track, insert return track, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna rename it and I'm gonna call it Guitar. You can also give tracks a color here. I'm gonna just give it a green or something like that, you know. Name, you know, give this clips the same color. I like to keep my sessions really nice and organized. Okay, one thing that's really cool about Ableton's clips is you can manipulate each one of them and do all kinds of cool things down here in the detail view. So if I go to this drum sample, if I double click it, it loads up the detail view. And down here at the bottom left hand corner, I have a bunch of different options for manipulating the sound. I can we zoom in here. I can turn it up and down if I want. Maybe it's too loud. I can turn it down. Notice how the waveform is changing. All right. I can transpose it or give it a pitch shift. So for example, if I just I'm going to hit this little button over here to stop all the clips. That stops all the clips. I'm going to play it. Now, if I come back in here, I can pitch it down. Get like a cool, cool different sound. Okay. So you can do that with anything. I can go in here to this percussion thing. Maybe double click it, it opens up. I can uh, pitch it down, or I can also hit this little button here and reverse it. So for example, I have the percussion going. Right? So maybe I want to reverse that percussion. I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> it sounds kind of weird, but it's cool. Let me hit that button again and reverse it, and then I'm gonna take that drum sample back up. A cool way to reset your parameters when you've changed them is to select it and then just hit the delete key and it resets it back. So if I had this way up and I was like, man, that's not right, I can just delete it and it goes back to zero. Okay, zoom back out. Um, another cool thing you can do is you can change the timing in which they play back. So for example, I have this percussion loop. Right, let's say I wanna play that twice as fast or half as fast. I can play it half as fast. Uh, a little halftime version. No, I did that by just clicking this button. This speeds it up times two and this divides it by two. So I can go back to where that's at. And now I can, you know, you get the idea. You can do some cool stuff. So that sounds kinda cool. So maybe if I played it like And then I could pitch it up. Okay, you hear it kind of sounds grainy. You can also change the warp modes here and get different sounds. So you have a bunch of different warp modes. And what warp modes are is how Ableton's manipulating the sound. So we could use beats, tones, texture, repitch, re -pitch, complex, and complex pro. Let's try uh, beats, and that gives it another even more. Even more of a glitchy sound. Okay, so you can really get experimental with these sounds and create something completely new, which is really awesome. Ableton Live is amazing for this. It's super easy, one of the easiest programs for manipulating audio like that. Okay, so now that we've done that, over here on our grand piano, notice we have a MIDI clip here. Now, I created these without the use of a keyboard or anything. I just drew in the notes here in Ableton. So I did that by starting with an empty uh, MIDI clip. You can right-click and choose Insert MIDI Clip, and it creates an empty clip here. Now I can come to my piano roll, and if I come up here to the top right-hand corner of the screen, I can choose the pencil tool and I go into draw mode and now I can draw notes in. So I can draw in the notes that I want. So maybe, for example, I, I can do that and now it's, and then play the clip. I could do chords, maybe, maybe. And you could adjust their length too if you want them to be longer. Or delete clips. Now B is the shortcut to turn draw mode on and off. So B on the keyboard does that. All right, now if I want to change this loop to be longer so it doesn't trigger every four, um, one bar, I can come down here to the length and change this to maybe four bars. And now I have a longer loop. And I can program some more stuff in here. So I have, I can come in here and 
You can also double click to add notes instead of going to draw mode. So you get the picture. It's really cool. All right, I'm gonna delete these guys because I don't really want that. I just wanted to show you here. And I'm gonna reset this back to where it was as well. Take that to there. And then move this back to that. So now I have... Okay, I'm gonna stop all my clips. Go back to the beginning by double clicking on the stop button. Now what I wanna do is record a performance. So I wanna play this just like I was triggering those samples, I wanna play this out and start to create a song. So to do that, you just record enable here, you record enable Ableton, and now when I play a, play a sample, it's going to start recording. So I've already kind of done this ahead of time and I know that I wanna start with my drums and then I wanna add some of the percussion and then add my bass line and then maybe drop the drums out and go into the piano. So you can kind of experiment. Well, what's really cool about this is you're able to record your performance and create something that you never would have done in other programs. This is kind of like a canvas or a really cool way to paint your your uh, your session out. So I hit the record button there. Now I'm just going to start with my drums. So I'm going to let those play. And I'm going to change this back to one bar up here at the top left so that my loops trigger on the next bar. Allows me to manipulate this a little easier. So on the eighth bar, I'm gonna add in this first percussion sound. Uh, maybe turn it down a little bit. I'm gonna let that go to 16 bars, then I'm gonna add the bass line. Pretty groovy little track. This is a, a, a new disco track is what it's called. That's the genre, it's new disco. So maybe switch the percussion. Maybe stop the percussion because I didn't really like that. Okay, let me hit the space bar and stop. So now that we've recorded that, we kind of want to see it in another view. So if we go up to view menu and choose arrangement, it'll take us into this view over here. Let me close this window down. So now I have, if I zoom out whoosh, by clicking there and dragging up, you see those clips that I recorded. Now they're all grayed out right now because I was in the other view, which by the way, you can change from view to view, from arrangement to session using these buttons or the tab key on your keyboard. So tab jumps you back and forth. And then all I gotta do is push this button and now the arrangement view is active instead of the session view. So now if I go back to the beginning, I'm starting to lay out my track here. So it's a really cool way to record your performance. So here in the arrangement view, it's a different view and layout of what we had before. In the other view, if I hit tab and go back, we had a vertical track display. So each track here is displayed vertically. Now in the arrangement view, if I hit tab and go back, we have a horizontal display of the tracks. So I have drums here, perk here, bass line here. So when I hit stop, I kind of ended these loops soon and I didn't like this loop and I kind of ended this loop a little too early. Now you see these little hash lines here, these little marks, that is an indicator that the loop is going to start over again. So basically you could just drag this out to an even number and then I'm going to drag this out here. I'm also going to highlight on perk 2, get rid of that and drag that out here. So now if I zoom back out, I have more of an even display here. Now let's say I want to add some of these other instruments that I had in the other view. I can hit tab. Let's say I want to add this muted guitar loop over there. I could just highlight it and hit command C on my keyboard. Hit tab to go back. Click on the track at the location I want to paste it and go command V. Notice I have the muted guitar now pasted in there. So I can move this around, drag it out and loop it. I can add it maybe here at the 25th bar. So now I have this muted guitar coming in at that bar. So if I hit play and listen to this, maybe I don't like the speed at which this plays back. Maybe you want to play it faster or slower. I can help come up here to the top left and adjust my tempo in this bar here. Right now we're at a tempo of 117 beats per minute or BPM. And I could drag that down to go slower 
and Ableton will automatically adjust all the samples to match the tempo. So I could drag it up to maybe 130, 31 there. I could also type in a number here, 124, type in 119, you get the idea. I actually liked 117 where it was, had a nice groove. And then that guitar will come in here. Now the arrangement view gets a lot more in depth, but this is just the basics of it. We've only begun to skim the surface of what Ableton Live can do. So if you're interested in learning more, I'd encourage you to take the electronic music production course this summer to learn a wide variety of techniques and sounds with Ableton Live 9. Thanks for watching.